Hey guys, welcome back to The Casual Puzzler. My name is Emily. We are going into a new series that I have been thinking about doing for a while, and then I saw Jigsaw Jimmy doing hers, and I was like, oh, I really wanna do some type of version of that on my channel. So we are going to be doing a puzzle roundup video for each month. So that way, if you are someone like me, I'm not a huge fan of watching time lapses. I just wanna know your quick review, and I like having more of a collective, just puzzle reviews of like a bunch of puzzles in one video. That's what this is. So I'm gonna go over all the puzzles that I did in the month of May, just give you quick little recaps, reviews of these puzzles. I do have some dedicated videos on some of these, some of them I don't and I just did off camera. Um, if I have a video about them, I'll link it down below in case you want to see a more thorough review or see the puzzles being done in action. But this is just a way for you guys to see the puzzles that I did all throughout the month. And I will say May was definitely a special month for me because I graduated, which gave me so much more free time to do puzzles. Throughout the earlier part of the year, I was only doing maybe like five to seven puzzles. I think in February, yeah, I, I keep track of it on an Excel sheet that's in front of me. In February, I only did three puzzles just because I was like smart and I didn't have enough time to do puzzles. And so May was super exciting because I had so much free time. I went away on vacation, did five puzzles when I was there. Um, and I just had so much free time to just do puzzles and it was just so nice that in May I ended up doing 15 puzzles, which is way higher than what I'm typically doing. And I have some of them still put together here on these foam boards. I, I'm pretty sure I have a picture at least of all the other ones. Then the ones that I did on vacation, I just left them behind so that my sister could do them. So I don't have those, but I have pictures and I think I have little video clips that I might just like pop up here. So you can just see all the puzzles that I did in the month of May. As you, I've already, as I've already mentioned, I did 15 puzzles. Now I am counting, there is a set here that I've done eight out of the 12. I'm counting that as just one puzzle because the puzzles are really, really tiny. So I don't think of them each as their own individual puzzle. So I did 15, but I technically did like 23 or something like that. Um, so, and I also have done way more puzzle pieces than normal. So again, I was doing about five to eight puzzles per month while I was in school and working full time. And I would probably do around like three to 4,000 pieces. And in May, I did over 10,000 pieces, which is crazy for me. So I typically go towards the 500 to 750 piece range, especially when I was in school. I'm now starting to branch back out into my thousand pieces. So I did a couple thousand pieces this month. I can see me doing a lot more thousand pieces in the future now that I have the time. Um, so we're just gonna get into this and I am going to talk to you all about the puzzles I did in May. So let's just get started. I am going to be referencing my computer right here. Sorry, it's distracting, um, but it just keeps track of all the puzzles that I've done and I don't want to miss any. Um, and actually at the very beginning of May, I don't have any of those puzzles with me at this point because I did them while on vacation when I was in Maine. I did bring them with me and I left them behind so that my sister could do them. I did five while I was there and I did talk about all five in our vlog that we did. So if you want to see that, I'll link it down below or up in the card somewhere like that. Um, so you can see our vacation, but also I talk a little bit more about those puzzles. So the first puzzle I did for the month was from Cloudberries and it was a whale. Um, I'm, I'm curious what happened with that one. It might have just been a lemon. You know, every brand has sometimes a puzzle that just doesn't do well and it just comes out a little bit different than the rest. And for some reason, Whale from Cloudberries just wasn't the same quality that I remember. And I have done a Cloudberries one before and I really didn't have any issues, but this one had a lot of issues with one fit which I did not have any issues with in previous Cloudberry puzzles I've done. And this one is like, it was weird because a lot of puzzle pieces fit together and my mom and my husband were also doing these puzzles with me. Um, they noticed it too. And so it was interesting that they had such a heart, a, a fit issue. Um, but I also had a really big issue with the pixelation on um, the coloring of that one. It was like almost like the printer was running out of ink because they were so spotty and it was so faded and it just wasn't what I was what I remembered. So just unfortunate because I still love the brand. I'll definitely get more from the brand. But um, the second puzzle I did on that trip was from Spin Masters, which is a brand I haven't done before. I did purchase it at Target and I really liked it. It kind of reminded me of my Blockbuster puzzles. I had those really 
large surface area puzzles, but they're pretty thin, but they were really nice pieces. I really enjoyed that puzzle a lot. Um, it was called Euro Trip, and it just had a whole bunch of different cities um, in little Polaroids, and it was just a fun puzzle. It was really, really easy. Me and my mom, my mom did it within maybe like an hour and a half. It didn't take us long at all. And it was just really fun and pleasant, and I just really enjoyed it a lot. Um, it didn't stay together very well. We were trying to do the whole pickup test for all of them, that one was did not do well, but even like when we were doing the puzzle, you can only move like a couple pieces at a time. But we really didn't have issues with us putting pieces in the wrong place. So um, next we did a we did a metallic puzzle, which I didn't go too much into detail in that video because I was just doing a very quick over I was just doing a quick voiceover when I was doing that that video. And so we did MB's Parsons Fruit Stand and it's completely metallic puzzle like that puzzle alone could have been its own video if i was doing it alone and had overhead footage and such but oh my gosh we loved that puzzle it was so much fun it was so shiny and it was tricky because the, the it was like a completely metallic full spectrum puzzle like when you looked at the pieces it would look different depending on the angle that you looked at it and i was just like really happy it was really happy to do this puzzle i did it with my mom and she enjoyed it too because she's like oh it's so shiny and it's just like I don't know, it was just really fun and we had no issues with fit. It was just a really fun puzzle when it was done. It looked crazy. It was so cool and I would 100% do more again. And I haven't done MB in ages and I always thought of them like as a basic puzzle, you know, like very traditional classic puzzle. And I feel like if you took away that metallicness of the puzzle and just had it a standalone picture, that's what I remind that reminds me of MB, like just a farm you know but having it be metallic was just super fun and definitely a different challenge that i'm used to and i really enjoyed it uh, next we had pete's gambling hall this one was a thousand pieces and this one my mom started while me and dave were in vermont she had done the border in a couple pieces and then me and dave kind of finished it off at the end and i really enjoyed this one i mean i just love charles wasaki puzzles they're super fun they're very nostalgic to me because i did them a ton when i was younger and I really enjoyed this one. It was super, again, fun. You can't really go wrong with this style of puzzle. And I really have nothing bad to say about it. Um, and then next, the final puzzle we did while on vacation was another Buffalo Games puzzle. And this was probably one of my favorite. I don't know. I had a, real, a lot of really good puzzles this month, but this was definitely my favorite when we were away. And that was Party Parrot by Buffalo Games. It was just super fun, very lighthearted puzzle. It was just a parrot dancing on a boom box. And it reminds me a lot of my New York puzzle company, Mr. Fly. It's just like very quirky and fun. Um, and I really enjoyed that one. Me and Dave did that spun together. And we were wild when we were puzzling together. Like we would like high five each other after each piece was in and we were just like it was pretty intense um my parents were making fun of us because we were so dorky and so over the top but we had a blast doing this puzzle together and i i just had a good time uh now moving on to puzzles while we were here i do have some together some not but now we will go into the things that are actually present so the first puzzle that i have here is the bits and pieces 300 piece it's just called, I think, Puppies. Like, it's nothing. It's a very traditional, classic puzzle style. It was a circular puzzle. It was missing a piece, but I did get it secondhand for $4.99, so I wasn't super mad about it. Um, it only took me maybe like 45 minutes to do. It was pretty quick and easy. And it was just a very classic, traditional puzzle. But it was nice in the evening. I was watching like YouTube or something when I was doing it. And I just, I liked it. I don't see anything spectacular about bits and pieces. It's been a while since I've done them, um, but it was just a nice, easy, no-nonsense puzzle. You know, I just enjoyed it. The next puzzle that I did was Sunis's Magic Box. I do a whole video dedicated to these gradient puzzles from Sunis. I had done, uh, I had done Sky Love in April, so I did this one when we got back and. I really love this one. This is definitely my favorite of the three. I am missing a piece, but not because of them. I know I have it, and I remember finding it and putting it in my pocket. I don't know where it went from there. It is a 100% matte puzzle, which I really appreciate, especially with the overhead lighting. Um, the box is also completely matte too, um, but it does get kind of dirty pretty quickly, and it's hard to wipe off, and so there's a little bit of, of um, I don't know what it was, even there, maybe oil or something like that from putting something on top. Um, but I don't mind, you know, it's just a puzzle box and I can see myself just like keeping these forever. I'm not going to like give them away or anything. 
Um, I really like this one a lot and I would definitely get more from the brand. It is a Canadian based woman owned company. It's super small and I go into a lot more in depth in that video. So I'm not sure which one of these videos is going to go up. We'll make sure to stay tuned for that one if it's not already. So I really, really enjoyed this one a lot. This one here was also one of my favorites of the month. I'm going to say that for like six other puzzles. I had a really good month with puzzles. Um, this one was so much fun. It was from Mud Puppy, which I hadn't done in a really long time. So when I think of Mud Puppy, I also think of Galveston at the same time. And I know a lot of you are on the same boat where their images are just super fun, but it's not the best quality and they're all twos, which is not my favorite. I'm someone who loves like the unique puzzle cuts. Like that's my favorite. And then I can go to like the traditional puzzle cuts, but I'm just not a fan when puzzles are all twos, you know? It just kind of loses a lot of interest for me. It's just not as fun as if it was just a little bit more unique. Um, but I do love the images of both Gallison and Mud Puppy. They do have paper backing, not my favorite, but they do have good fit. So I don't know where, I mean, you win some, you lose some. Um, but I just love their images and I loved this one in particular. So this is Artsy Cats by Mud Puppy. I got it from Odyssey 5 Puzzles. And I just, I loved the image of this one. So I'm just going to hold this box. I'll show you the puzzle in a second. Um, but I just like how they actually took different artists and made a cat picture based on that artist style. So you obviously have Van Go, you have Picasso. Like it's just really fun and quirky. And even though it was all twos, not my favorite thing, I really enjoyed this puzzle a lot. So let me show you it so you can see. Um, one thing I will say it is super shiny. So again, quality wise, not my favorite brand, but I mean, image wise, super fun, right? Super fun, would definitely recommend this puzzle. Um, but again, the brand, not my favorite, but I mean, I like it and it's affordable. So there is that. Next, we have a puzzle from Ravensburger and this is Santorini Sunset. I thought it was so funny when I was editing that video for the haul where I got this one because I was trying to pronounce the name of the puzzle in German because it had it, I didn't realize it, the name, anyways, it's called Santorini Sunset. I was trying to read the German name, which is why I was struggling with it. Um, so I, I love this one a lot. One, because it's Ravensburger. I haven't done a ton of stuff from them, but their quality is fantastic. You know, it's just, unlike other brands, it, I feel like it's just on the league of its own. Super thick, chunky pieces, really good fit, really just bright, vibrant colors, not super shiny, not completely matte. It's like everything that you love in a puzzle is with Ravensburger. This one was only 300 pieces, and I kind of wish I got the thousand piece option. They do have it in a thousand pieces. And I just got the 300 because I was like, I want something quick, funny, easy. And it definitely was quick, fun, and easy. It didn't take me long at all. It's only 300 pieces. And I loved it. I loved everything about it. Let me show it to you. And look how vibrant and bright this puzzle is. There's a lot going to, with it. And you really don't get stuck anywhere. I also am realizing one thing I enjoy about a puzzle is doing sky. Which I did think I would be a huge fan of sky, but I feel like whenever there's a sky in a puzzle, I love doing that section. Um, it's super relaxing. I love this one because it's more like sunsetty and it's orange and pink and purple. I just really love that. But there's a few other puzzles that I did this month that had sky in it, and I just like those sections of puzzle. Um, so that was just something interesting to discover about myself when I was doing puzzles this month. Um, but this one I love. It's a based off. Of, it is based in Greece, and it's just. Bright, vibrant flowers, sunset, birds. So I am actually thinking about getting this one in the larger piece count because I really loved it a lot and I could see myself doing it in like the thousand pieces. So I am I love this one and 100% would recommend. Next we have another Sunas puzzle. This is Jelly Bean from the Gradient Collection. And this one I really enjoyed. It was definitely the easiest of all three and did not take me long whatsoever. Uh, it took me maybe like five and a half hours. It was really, really quick, um, especially once we got to the jelly bean part. That part I like flew through because one section, I mean, it was just pretty easy to decipher the colors and it was just bright and it's all matte and I just really enjoyed it. And so this one I did also enjoy, but I do think Magic Box is my favorite out of all three. Next, I don't have put together, but I do have a picture of it, I believe, or like a video of me putting in the last piece. And this is from New York Puzzle Company, and it's one of their panoramic puzzles, which is why I don't have it with me, because it's really long. I didn't realize how long the puzzle was, 
and it like barely fit on this table. So um, this one is called Midnight Migration and it is with collaboration with Cornell Labs and it is just, I loved it. I loved it. It was way different than I was expecting it was to be. I mean, when I got the image, I was like, oh, it's fun, it's birds, it's dark at night. And I will say, this half of the puzzle did not take me long at all. And, and then we got to this section here, and I feel like this section took just as long as the whole other half of the puzzles. I did this one within a couple days because I only did it like maybe an hour or two. And it was just nice to do puzzles like that. Like sometimes I will do a puzzle, especially like for the next few, I did it in like one sitting. Sometimes it's nice to just leave your puzzle overnight and have it something to do in the morning when you wake up or when you get home from work for a few minutes, you know? So. So I do like that and I think I'm going to be starting to do more thousand pieces and just like leave them on the table and try to keep them protected overnight because I kind of like just waking up and putting in a couple pieces or coming home and doing a couple pieces or maybe I, if I'm working home that day and I have a few minutes during my lunch break, I can do a couple pieces then. And I just really enjoyed that and especially I noticed it with this one. Um, and I love the end result with this one. It was really, really pretty. I could see myself doing this one again and I don't normally say this, but like taping it or putting it together temporarily to like put as wall art on the wall. Um, I just really enjoyed this image and I feel like that would be really pretty as like an art display type deal. So I really like this one. I really love New York Puzzle Company. I think I'm realizing this is probably in my top four or five puzzle brands. And next we have a pomegranate puzzle, which it has been a while since I've done them because I haven't had a lot of great success with some of their larger pieces and especially some that are more like monochromatic puzzles. But I did this one and it's the quest for knowledge. And I loved this one. I could see myself enjoying it as a thousand pieces. I don't know if it comes in a larger piece count, but I really love this image. I like how it has like two different sections. You have this really bright, beautiful, almost like a sunset style, but it's more like artsy. I'm not very good describing this, um, but then it has this more landscape style with the moon and stars and sun, and it's just very unique. And I will say when I was putting it together, the colors were, I feel like more vibrant than the box shows and so putting it together is really fun it did not take me long at all it took me just one evening and i really loved i thought i would really love this section the most a very bright colorful section which was pretty easy but i also loved just doing the sun like having that sun appear was really fun too so i definitely recommend this one i had no issues with the quality whatsoever that i've seen in other pomegranate puzzles before like i know they don't have like the best fit so you can't really move large sections at a time, but their pieces are so chunky and thick, and it's just really satisfying to put in a puzzle piece. So I am gonna get more from the brand, but I think I'm just gonna have to be really particular about the images that I do, and go more for the bright, bold ones versus the more artsy, monochromatic, can be pretty tricky puzzles. So I think that's what I'm gonna do in the future for pomegranate, because I love how thick their pieces are, but it's just, I, I've had, it's hit or miss experiences with me. So now we're going into the puzzles for the challenge that I'm, I'm doing. If you missed, I think it was my last, the video before last, I talked about all the puzzles on my to-do list and I'm on a no buy until all those puzzles are done. I'm definitely making way on those puzzles. I have done 10 out of the 28, but some of them are really, really tiny. And now I'm moving into the, I want to say I only have a couple 500 pieces left and then going into the thousand pieces. So piece count wise, I'm about a quarter of the way there and I have really been having fun with it. And I like just having already knowing the puzzles that are on the docket to do versus like going into my puzzle section, trying to pick out which puzzle. It's just, I'm just like, well, these are the puzzles I got, which one am I doing tonight? And so I have been really trying to do a few pieces at each day. I have it so I'm supposed to be doing like 300 pieces a day to finish it before the puzzle convention, which is in July. So even if I'm a puzzle too short, I'm still gonna buy stuff at the puzzle convention, but I do wanna, I don't know, I just try to keep myself accountable and just do the puzzles that I currently own. So the first puzzle that I did was actually part of the set, which I'll show you in a minute, but I am going to show you this one first which is by Vermont Puzzle Company, and it is Amsterdam Aglow. And this is definitely not my style, but I really enjoyed this one. One thing we'll say, super shiny. Like this is definitely one of the shiniest puzzles that I've ever done. 
but I did like the quality. I do like how the pieces do stay together pretty well. Um, again, it's just pretty shiny, especially since it is a darker puzzle. So doing it underneath lighting was a little bit challenging, not crazy. Um, and again, it's not usually my style. I don't go for this photographic type of imagery, but I liked it. I like the bikes. I like these lights going up. I love the sky section and the tree. Um, I didn't really get stuck anywhere at all. Um, but I just get bored with this type of image. I could only do it for maybe like an hour and then I'm like, okay, next. And so that's why I usually don't go for photographs. I just get bored. I got that one. And now let's go into the set that I have. So I have this 12 piece set. It's massive. Um, so there's 12 puzzles in here. Four are 150 pieces, so not hard at all. For our three to pieces, again, not hard at all. And then for our 500 pieces. So there's 12 puzzles all together. I want to say it's 3,600 pieces. I've done half of the piece count. I did get this second hand for $5.99. So definitely a good value. And inside the person actually put them in separate baggies and named the puzzle. So that is pretty awesome. So I was pretty excited about that when I discovered inside the box. And I did, again, do eight out of the 12, but I haven't done any of the 500 pieces. So I've only done the 150 to 300. So they were all pretty easy. My issue that I'm having now is that there isn't any image besides these really, really tiny squares on the box, the rectangles on the box. There's nothing else inside that helps me with the image. So I pretty much have just been going off of the puzzle and have been pretty much not using the image whatsoever. So going into the 500 piece count is a little bit trickier because I don't have those images to go by. But I am just taking a break from those. I feel like they get pretty repetitive after a while. So let me just show you the ones that I have. They're not in no particular order, but we have this 300 piece one which is a, I think it was like travel, travel book or something like that. Travel journal, this was called travel journal. And this one, I am missing a piece right on the top, but I did enjoy this one. I had a few pieces that had the one section of the puzzle piece just like breaking off or completely gone. Like I don't know if you can tell right here, there's a puzzle piece missing right here. Um, or not the whole piece, but just like a section of the puzzle piece. And I've noticed that with a couple of the other puzzles, and there, there are some sections that are completely bent. So, I mean, this puzzle has definitely taken a beating. This box has definitely taken a beating. But again, for $5.99 for 12 puzzles, I'm not complaining too much. Um, but I really like this one. Uh, I just wish it was like a standalone puzzle and not like in a giant set. Next, we have two more of the 300 pieces. And these ones you can see is how it can become pretty repetitive, where it's just like city scenes, you know? Um, so we have this one, which was... Paris, which I think was my favorite out of all of them. And then this one was, I believe, Venice right here, which is fine. And then again, you can see a few pieces that are just bent a little weird, but again, this was second hand. And then I do have all the 150 pieces and then the last 300 pieces is also missing a piece. So two so far are missing pieces, but you know, not too mad because it's of the price point. So. So those are the other ones that I've done. The 150 are pretty small. I do think out of the 150, the Taj Mahal was my favorite. And then the final puzzle that I did this month was this one from W.H. Smith, and this is Culinary Cats by Linda Jane Smith. And this one was super fun. It was just very lighthearted, and apparently they are a stationery brand, one of you guys mentioned that, and it is a uh, British, it is an English brand. So. I am curious to looking up this brand. I haven't done anything really besides what's on the back and it gives you more options, which aren't really my style. They're very traditional classic puzzle images, but I did really enjoy the quality. I liked the puzzle pieces. They weren't super big surface wise, but they, were really, they had a nice thickness to it. It has a nice shine to it. And I think putting it together was just like very relaxing. It wasn't like a super huge puzzle, which is what I liked. I, again, similar with the New York Puzzle Company puzzle. I just left it on the table and would do a couple pieces here and there. I didn't have just like one long session of doing this puzzle and I just really liked doing that. It was just very relaxing to just sit for a couple minutes here and there. And so I would consider myself just doing that more in the future. So uh, again, I enjoyed it. I really liked the image. It was very quirky with all these different cats getting into mischief. But I don't see myself getting more from the brand just yet. I had to see the other images. Because right now, based on the other images on the box, I'm not really wanting to do more. Um, it does come with a poster, which is nice. 
and I want to say I was I paid like $3.99 for it, so not a lot at all. And I will say it was secondhand, but it was still completely sealed in the bag. Some of you say that some people just like reseal the bag afterwards. I feel like that's a lot of effort for donating a puzzle, so I haven't had issues with the ones that are pre have been sealed, but I liked it. I can see myself just researching the brand more before buying it. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I did over 10,000 pieces this month, which was awesome. And then this coming month, I hope to do just as much because I have a lot of puzzles to get through. I have them right here next to me of the ones on my to-do list. And I do have a few others that aren't in this pile that I wanted to do videos on. So it's going to be a busy month. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope I feel better soon so I don't have to deal with this raspiness any longer. Um, but thanks again, and I'll see you next time.